choosing joy. Did you know that choosing joy is a choice? Choosing means that you have a choice. And you have a choice to choose joy. You had a choice to come to church today. Amen. Could have just laid in bed and hit the snooze and uh, what have you. I had to run to Roswell this morning. Boy, I tell you what, my alarm went off and Gone. it was really, yeah. I was like, oh, I just want to sleep some. But I had to get up. I had to go take care of some stuff. Praise the Lord. Father, we love you and we praise you, Lord. We welcome the presence. We thank you for your presence that's already here. I thank you for the presence of the Holy Ghost. We welcome you just to speak to us, teach us, help me to just speak what you want me to speak this morning, Father God. I thank you for your mighty word that it's powerful, Lord. It's able to go in and do what needs to be done in our hearts. Father, we open our hearts up this morning to receive them in, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I'll just confess to you guys, I don't choose joy all the time. <laughs> yeah, because it's a choice, and I'm human. And sometimes I realize a little while into it, it's like, man, I could have chose joy. Why did I choose this? Does anybody hear what I'm saying? It's a choice. It's a choice to choose joy and walk in the joy of the Lord. And it says the joy of the Lord is our what? Strength. Our strength. Amen. It's the strength. It's what strengthens us. Bless, bless you. It strengthens us. It builds us up. And what we're going to see here in a little bit, it actually does something in our brain. We're going to talk about that. What one word describes the state you're in right now from the day, from the day today or the week? And I would put that in past tense because we just released that. Anybody care to say what you released here a little while ago? Anxiety. Yeah, yeah. Hurt. What is it? Hurt. Hurt. Good. Release the hurt. Yes. Worry. Worry. Release the worry. Yes. I have been thinking about so much stuff in the past here lately. Yeah. Oh, it's like, oh, the past. Yeah, let it go. <laughs> I can't go back. You know, it's a kick. <laughs> Second the clock, you know, try to uh, can't do that. Release the past. Yeah. What else? Rejection. Rejection. Yeah, it's rejection. Fear. Fear. Release the fear. Praise the Lord. The stuff that you can away grab back. Things you grab back. Yeah. Yes. That's good. Yeah. Couple more. Release your family. Yeah. It's good. Sister Ruby says your dad. Your dad, yeah. Trust the Lord, you know. My goodness, uh, he cares about everybody else more than we we do, actually. You know what I mean? He cares about us more than sometimes we care about ourselves. Does that make sense? So he's got good intentions. And it doesn't, my dad used to tell me, not that he had it all figured out either about worrying. He said, son, it's not, it's not going to change anything worried about. It's actually going to make it worse. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're right. So choose joy, amen? In Philippians 3.1, it says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you, it is safe. And I'm going to tell you this morning, to rejoice in the Lord is a safe place. It's a safe thing. So think about this. The enemy comes in and he brings those things that we released this morning already before we're moving into this. And he comes in and he starts saying those things, whether it's the past, it's rejection, it's hurts, or maybe worrying about our family or whatever. And he says, what if? Or maybe, maybe it won't. Or whatever. And then what happens is when we yield to that, and I'm going to tell you right now, God has good intentions for you. He has good intentions for humanity. But when we let down our guard, and I'd say, this is your guard right here. It's the mighty word of God, amen? But when we let it down, if we just take it and just sit it over there and say, hey, I'm just going just gonna to do whatever today. We don't let the word go before us. We're going to be in trouble. That day is going to be a day of emotions up and down here and there, and maybe just down. Maybe not necessarily even up, but down. And it's affecting us in our physiology. 
We teach that here, that our thought life affects our body. So choosing joy is vital. And when you choose joy, you need to picture what I read you in Psalm 125, is the mountains of glory encamping about it. And there you are safe in the middle of it. Up on our property on the mountain, there's a place in the National Forest. It's interesting where our spot is. It's kind of down below. We got a little, kind of a neat little area. But when the winds are blowing and rushing down the valley in there and stuff, I'll go outside and I'll feel the air blowing, but it's not as intense as if I walk over to one side of the property and kind of get out of that ledge a little bit. Man, it roars in there. So it's like a really beautiful safe haven. What I kind of see is like the hand of the Lord there just watching over and protecting. But there's areas in the natural forest that are just kind of little meadows. You've probably seen some of those, brother, and some of y'all have, but just kind of a little lower area. And years ago, when I was walking around up there in the forest, scoping out some stuff, I saw those areas, and for those of y'all that hunt and stuff, you know where the elk and the deer and the wildlife bed down because the grass is all run down. And I could see that they had been there, and I thought, oh, that's it. That's a beautiful little meadow. But it was kind of hollowed out a little bit, a little low area, so it, catch, it caught the water, I guess that's how the, the grasses got established and what have you. But it was a safe area. And a lot of times, you know, I know this about cattle. When you look at cattle and when they're in a group and a herd, they lay down in a way where they're all watching. You need to know that when you lie down, wherever you go, number one, you're in the hollow of God's hand. Number two, you need to know that he is camped about you. He is watching over you. The enemy wants us to fear so much, doesn't he? Fear the outcomes, things, the what ifs, and what have you. That's not a good place to be. It has been proven scientifically that our bodies respond to joy and they respond to fear. Our bodies respond to joy and they respond to fear. Each one of these is a choice that we make. You know, the words tells us that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. But again, joy releases dopamine, and it releases serotonin. We need that. We need it to the right levels. God designed our bodies to release these chemicals that come from the, the endocrine system is what manages that. But depending on what you're listening to, it's... You're basically given a prescription to your body that if you're in fear, you're going to start releasing what's called cortisol. And the enemy likes to keep us in fear. Maybe not a, he would love to keep us way up here in fear, but a lot of times that ain't going to happen, but he keeps us right here in fear. And our body's constantly dripping cortisol. Drip, 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 drip. The endocrine system is trying to do and all this and that because what we're doing is we're listening to the wrong thing. A certain amount is okay and from time to time, but when you got a constant feeding of that, God did not design this to be that way. Do you think there was any fear in the garden? No. Any fear in the garden? Not until after the fact. But when God created them, everything was perfect. It was good. There was no fear. You know, the Lord came down to the pool of the day and walked with them. No fear whatsoever. They, they felt three things. Secure, they were significant, and they were accepted. It wasn't until it was a choice thing. There again, a choice was made, and those things were stolen. And ever since then, we as humanity, humans living on this earth, were born into that. Thank the Lord that Jesus came for us. Amen. So we could get restored back to him so that we could walk in peace. I love shalom, shalom. It's nothing lacking, nothing missing. And he says, I have that. He says, the world doesn't give it to me. He says, he gives it to me. And he says, he doesn't take it away. So even when I'm maybe listening to fear, peace is still there. That's that's. That's a wonderful thing. It's not something that, hey, I've got to go out on a conquest now, and i got to find my peace somewhere or whatever. No, it's there. It's up to you to just take it back. Take a hold of it. So making a choice in the midst of what is going on to say, praise God. 
had an uncle many, many years ago. I had spent some time with him back in the early 80s. Uh, his name was Uncle Johnny. That's what I called him. Uncle Johnny. John Klein. Really wonderful guy. But he was always saying, praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that was his mindset every time I saw him. But he was always in a good mood. And, and as I got older, I looked back with that and, and, and spending the time with him as a kid. And he taught me a lot of really good things. But he taught me to give praise to God. To have a good attitude. I'm sure he struggled from time to time. As a kid, I never saw it, though. So I really looked up to him. And I thought it was the words that were coming out of his mouth. He was making a choice to do right, do good, do right, make a choice to say to do the right thing. Yeah. Dopamine and serotonin are two things released in our bodies that help to maintain us and keep balance within our bodies. I would say that when all the chemicals are being released in the right amounts, then we are at a place that is called homeostasis. Y'all ever heard that word before? Homeostasis, which is balance. That's all it is, is, is your body is in balance. It doesn't take yoga to do that. Yoga gets you in a bad place. You don't want to. Anybody say, hey, I got some Christian yoga for you. You need to say, no, sorry. No, thank you. I've got, I got peace. I have the peace that passes all understanding. That's all I need. Amen. But I would call this balance, this homeostasis, I would call that peace within your body. And the world is, is trying to come up with peace because they don't have peace if they don't have Jesus. Amen. Without Jesus, you can't have true peace with God. You can't have true peace with your surroundings. You can't have true peace with other people, even though there's a battle raging. In it. You can maintain your peace inside of you by trusting the word of God. Amen. It's not the peace that the world gives, but the peace that God gives. Joy will affect even our blood down to the vessels. It's called the dilation. It affects that in your body, and that's that's where high blood pressure even comes from. Now, I've had a struggle with that over the years in the past. A lot of that was generational with my family. But I've realized every now and then I'll check my blood pressure. It's like, okay, it's up a little bit. What's going on? What am I listening to? What, what am I entertaining? And it's like, okay. And so, Lord, okay. And when I take my peace back, I'll check it again, and my blood pressure is going back down. Isn't that crazy? It's not really. It's the way God designed us to be. And if we would just trust him, everything would be smooth. Amen. We know that choosing fear takes a major hit on our bodies. Back in 2020, middle of March to the end of April, I chose to listen to fear. And I took a major hit emotionally. And I took a hit majorly physically. And I almost died as a result of it. Some of y'all were here at the church at that time. You knew what I went through. I had insomnia for six weeks straight where I literally maybe slept about an hour a day, but only a few minutes here and a few minutes there collectively. I was in a bad way. I was struggling for my life. And my, my wife was like, me go to the hospital. I ain't going to the hospital. I had so, many, so much pride in me. <laughs> but I had to deal with it. It's like, no, I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to do this and that. And literally, our steps are all house there in Camelot. Anybody ever been to our house before, but before we sold it, it was just stairs. Now, when we bought it, I loved it. I'd run up those suckers, and I'd run down those stairs. But at that point, I was taking one step at a time. Holding on to that lady right there. Finally, she just got in my face and said, you're going in. And that was the process of realizing that I was getting ready to step over the threshold because I had listened to some stuff that was messing with me and I'd gotten into a place of hopelessness because I'm not perfect. I listen to things from time to time. A lot of people won't admit to that. But I admit to that. From time to time, I listen to things. But you know what? When I realize that I'm in the midst of it, 
And the Lord speaks to my heart. And I realize that I take responsibility. I say, Lord, I'm sorry. And the very thing that I was needing was being held back because I was being stubborn. Isn't that right, honey? And when I finally released and said, Lord, I give this to you. There's no way I can run a business 11 hours away that has given, been given back to me. And Lord, I'm going to just let that go. And financially, I was needing that money because I'd sold a business. The young man that bought it from me and made it, was making a payment every month. And we were able to pay our bills. And all of a sudden, got got cut off because he's like, I don't want to do this anymore. And I'm like, uh, oh. and the next thing you know, I'm going down here because I took my eyes off of the Lord. And when I finally repented and I said, Lord, I released that and I walked away from that business. I gave it away. Totally walked away and said, Lord, I don't know what to do here other than trust you. But I give it to you. Then I got a call from a man it says, Lord, put me on your heart, you and your family. And it says, we're going to take you guys on financially and help you out. And that happened for quite a while. And I look back on that. And the only reason I tell you all that, number one, tell you that I'm not perfect. Okay. Number two, I was holding back exactly what the Lord wanted to use to bless me by not trusting you. Y'all ever heard about the monkey? You know how they catch monkeys over in their Africa or wherever they're at? They got them in the rainforest too, I guess. You see the monkeys while you over there? Where are we? Monkey. Yeah. <laughs> now I've heard this, so I'll preface it with that. It's actually frogs. Yeah, it's frogs, yeah. But they put bananas in these containers, and the monkeys want those bananas. They love monkeys. I love them. They love bananas. Monkeys love bananas. I love bananas too. Banana pudding. So, they put them inside there and then they take and they'll fire that thing or, or take it and attach it with something to where they can't get away. And they'll reach in there and when they grab that banana and they put their hand like that, they can't get their hand out with that banana. And they ain't gonna let go of that banana because that's what they want. That's all they got on their mind is bananas. And the next thing you know, they've caught that monkey because he ain't gonna let go of it. My point is the very thing that you need to let go of is what keeps pulling us down when we get caught by the enemy. And we pray, and we're going to pray again here at the end of the service for more things that the Lord is going to be showing me during this message to let go of. Amen? Just let go of it. I'm not saying we're all a bunch of monkeys. Okay? Don't, I don't care what I'm not saying. I'm not saying I'm Sometimes I feel like a monkey. Though. I don't know what it is. Oh, Curious George. I love Curious George. A little funky. <laughs> I look like one too. I remember my brother and I when we were young kids growing up in uh, Winchester, Kentucky. He came in one day, and apparently, I thought back on this over the years, and I thought somebody must have made fun of his ears or something. Told him, you look like a monkey or something. He's like, hey, my ears stick out too far. And I think the problem was mom and dad kept our hair very short, not as short as you. Uh, <laughs> but they kept it really close cut. They wanted us to you look know, at all that good stuff. And he came home one day and he's like, got a plan. I was like, what is it? Man? He says, we're going to take pieces of cloth and we're going to cut them and put them on our ears and take a string and tie it around our head and hold our ears against our head all day. And when we take that string off, our ears will be further in. They won't stick out as far. And I, I went along with that. <laughs> I was probably five or six years old. That's one of the memories I had as a child. And so I think back on that now, and it's like, wow, that, that was an insecurity going on in him. And it must have been in me too, or maybe I didn't know, but I played along. But I fully expected when we took the strings off and we took those off our ears, that our ears would just be laid back in against our head. And all of a sudden, it was just like, I think they came out further, actually. <laughs> But it didn't work. It didn't work. Hallelujah. So yeah, when you look like one too. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I chose to listen and walk in fear rather than join the Lord, which is trusting and making the choice to rest in Him. 
man, I got that choice every day. I had something going on the other day, and saw with Sandy, she's like, she says, get off the limbic side of your brain. I'm like, oh, I didn't want to hear that. Okay. Like, yes, ma'am, I'm getting off the limbic side because the limbic side is the side that's like, ah, freaking out, you know? I was like, yes, ma'am. Okay. And it worked out. And that's the amazing thing about it. You know, we need each other. We need each other to come home and say, hey, it's going to be all right. You're going to be fine. You know, it's going to be good. It's all going to work out. My dad used to tell, always tell me that. He says, son, it's all going to work out. And he'd say it sometimes. He'd say, I don't know how. And I'm like, I want to know how. <laughs> but he said, it's going to work out. There was something about that because I trusted my daddy. I knew my daddy loved me. But he'd say, it's going to work out. It's going to be okay, son. And there was something about the comfort there. Amen. Just the words. Just knowing, just knowing that somebody's telling you that, hey, it's going to be okay. It, it's going to, you know, the word of God says this too shall pass. It also says and it came to pass. It didn't come. I think I can't remember the, the, the comedian. He's a it was Mark Lowry. I love that. He says, and it, and it came to pass. It didn't come to stay. <laughs> now can, can you look back at all, and I don't want us to sit here and dwell on all the bad stuff that's happened in the past, but those things came and went, didn't they? Yeah. So if they came and went, they're not still here, but you might be still facing, you might be facing today something that's presenting itself, similar to the past, whatever. You have to be reassured that just because those came, they didn't stay. And most of what we worry about doesn't materialize either. Yeah, man, it's such an incredible point right there. We project that thing and we just keep chewing on it and chewing on it. And then it doesn't happen. And how do we feel after that? Like, man, how much time and effort did we put into the, that, that worry? You know, some people may have patterns at home. Man, you know, a lady years ago that we ministered to and at her house, she literally had a pathway that was worn down from her walking back and forth. It was a spirit of insanity, but it was just constantly, kids were like, it's driving us insane. But all night, pacing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. She finally got delivered to that, praise God. But she had to make a choice to walk out of that and say, you know, I realize that is a lie. I've been listening to this from the devil, and I'm making a choice right here, right now. I come out of agreement with that. Do you know that you know that you know that you know that your Father in Heaven loves you? Yes. He cares for you. He ain't going to come and, and a, you know, it's like when we're growing up and keep, as, as children. You know, all my kids, man, every one of them had the opportunity when they were growing up. Stones on. They don't get close to that. They will burn it. I said don't get close to that. Things going to burn it. Yeah, and they want to, I ain't going to let them do that. I'm going to let them get their hand a little close. They feel the heat and get some realization there. Mm -hmm. a, lot of people, a lot of times people say, well, no one's won't do it again. Yeah, I get that. But my heart is, I don't want my child to get burned. God does not want you to burn. That's why I said Jesus. And if we're in Christ, we will never burn. Amen. His intentions for you are good every day. So many times people say, well, God's making me go through this. No, it's because we made a choice of something, and now what's over man so of that shall he also reap. But I've seen things and consequences because of choices that people have made in the past, and it's like, you know what? Oh. Just get on my, whoa. Holy God can do that. Wipes it totally out. Incredible. Our God is an awesome God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Circumstances are subject to change, you all. You need to understand that. Every circumstance you have faced in the past, every circumstance that you face today, tomorrow, it is subject to change. Amen. But many times we look at the circumstances around us and view them with our physical eyes. How many of y'all got eyes in here? I see them. I can see the wide of your eyes, too. At two of them, yeah. We have a tendency to look at things that we've gone through in the past 
and, and all the maybe traumas and things like that. It's like, this is not going to turn out good. And I think about David when he went up against Goliath. And it's like, he had the confidence of the Lord. I think he could have been running out there, as he was running out there to meet Goliath. You know, if he, if he had tripped over a, a rock or something and stumbled and, you know, rolled a few times, I, I think he would have gotten up still and just whoosh, hit that dude. Supposing when he got there. Yeah. That dude was a bad dude. Think about a, a sling back in the day. Those guys could hit that. What do they call that? Hair, hair width or whatever. I mean, it's just take a dude. I mean, just look, you put a little dot on the building. They could nail that. That's how accurate they were. God had them. He'd already trained him. He'd already trained his fingers for war. Praise the Lord. There wasn't anything that he faced going up against the enemy that he didn't doubt. Now, I know he had some doubt, but he knew that God, if he would just trust in God, God would come through for him. Amen? Yeah. And did God come through for him every time? Yes. You betcha. Every time. Amen? I finally got delivered from that major fear, and God also healed my heart for congestive heart failure and myocarditis, which was brought on from a broken heart and hopelessness that had taken root in me through the element of fear. And here, here, here's what it was. Money's coming in. We're up here. And we're praise God, you let us up here for we, 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 We've done a church plant, and preaching the gospel and this and that, and ministering to people. And the money's coming in, paying the bills up here. And all of a sudden, it dries up. I'm like, oh, honey, I think I'm going to go fishing. My name was here. I go fishing. All of a sudden, Jesus was gone. But what did Peter do? He went back to what he knew. He did. So what I said was, I guess I'm going to have to go back to Texas, start running that business, and you just stay. You know, this, this is stupid. It's been, but it, it was the reality that it was facing me at the time. And I even told my wife, I'll go back and I'll work during the week and I'll come up in on the weekends. <laughs> so that we can financially make it and stay here. Because I know God called us up here. Well, why would he have me drive 11 hours, work all week? The older I get, some of that work, man, it's, I can't do it as quick as I used to. <laughs> and then drive 11 hours back, at church, and then go back. It wasn't until she told me, she says, <clears throat> and I told her, and, 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 you know, if that doesn't work out, then we'll just have to move back to Texas. She says, I'm not going to Texas. I remember my grandmother years and years ago, she lived in Corinth, Mississippi. And we were moving from Kentucky, and, and uh, that's where she was going in Corinth. And she was living in Kentucky at the time of this in 1980. <laughs> and she says, I am not going to Texas. You can drop me off in Corinth, Mississippi. She tell my dad this. And y'all can go on to Texas and just leave me there. Dad's like, oh, okay. She says, and you know Texas, it's the backside of nowhere. She said, and I don't want to be on the back side of nowhere. But as a kid, I like Texas. Texas is nice. It's the front side of it. It is. I know, man. It's incredible. But that was her perspective. That's so all she take to move up here. Yeah, all the Texans are up there. How many Texans in here this morning? Praise the Lord. Come on, one, two, three, four. Yeah. New Texicans. New, new Texicans. We need to change the name of the town, right? Yeah. A bunch of new Texicans up here. Praise the Lord. All right, let me move on. We have a choice to make every day and every minute down to the moment, folks. We have a choice to make to have a good attitude. Everything we're facing. Every day. I believe the key for us living in peace is making the choice to do so. Living in peace is not based on circumstances, but on how we face those circumstances. You know, and I get it. We've all gone through traumas. Some of us have been through PTSD, maybe even CPTSD. And that CPTSD is, is that long term where you're just staying right there. You don't have a relief from the fear or the trauma, the things going on. 
and it trains you is what it does. What we've been talking for years now up here is that you need to be trained by the word of the Lord. You need to understand those traumas and those events that you went through. Yes, you went through them. We don't deny that. But what we do now is we affirm that the lies that were spoken in the midst of those traumas and after the fact that we're ongoing and ongoing and ongoing, something happened to you and now you look at yourself and you're like, man, I got big ears. They're looking at my ears. Oh my goodness. Quit looking at my ears. Are you looking at my ears? No. You can fill in the blank with anything there. And that's believing a lie. You need to accept yourself for who God made you to be. That doesn't mean that you live in sin and you live in the things that are holding you back from stepping into the things of the Lord that he's called you to do and how he sees you. You, you, you move on. But the enemy wants to keep us in the past, doesn't he? So how does he do that? He continues to bring things around and stir up that lie that we were told when we were young, maybe in our childhood, young adulthood, or or maybe even a few weeks ago. He continues to speak it. And he's good at putting words in other people's mouths, too, folks. You gotta realize that. I I am totally about not advocating being around safe people. Because I used to be around a lot of unsafe people growing up. And I'm gonna tell you what, safe havens is the place to be, praise the Lord. And that's why we spent a little bit of time talking about people that are, what would, what would the word I would use? Uh, there's a word I'm trying to come up with. Not septic. Toxic. Toxic. Yeah, that's the word. Sometimes it's okay, folks, to say, Oop, we're done for a while. <laughs> and set a boundary and say, no, that's not boundary. You're stepping over it. Stop. I've had to literally block people on my phone because they didn't have, they had boundaries for themselves to some degree, but they did not respect anybody else's boundaries whatsoever. And I wasn't going to heal in myself until I got out away from that. So think about this. Think about a drug addict. Would it be good for a drug addict it's like, I'm done with this. I want to quit. You know, I've, I've gotten a place where I'm dry now. But, hey, I'm, I'm going to hang out with my druggy friends, man. Yeah. I just, I love Fred and Wilma. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you go back and you start, next thing you know, you're going to be right in the middle of it again. Toxicity. It's not good. We don't deny that we have walked through some toxicity. We have, but it's the truth that makes us free and realize that that's not my identity. Amen? That's not who I am. I don't identify with that anymore. The enemy wants to come back and bring it in and say, this is your identity. This is your stone that you stand on. And it really ain't a stone. It's a bunch of sand. It just crumbles out from underneath you every single time. It's a lie. How many are in Christ? How many? Amen. You in Christ Jesus? Then you got a solid rock you're standing on. Praise God. Living in a peace, living in peace is not based on circumstances, but on how we face those circumstances. It's how you face them. It, it, it's how you approach those, those situations. We had a sign for one of our boys we got years ago, remember, honey? And it says, attitude is a choice. Pick a good one. <clears throat> and he put it over above his bed, and you see it. First thing he woke up in the morning, praise the Lord. And I would say that he's, he's picked a pretty good attitude. Praise God. Hallelujah. Some of us might do us good to have one of those and put it on our ceiling above our bed. Attitudes there, and we pick a good one. I'm going to tell you right here, this is the attitude to have. Amen. Amen. 
Face everything that you come in contact with with the word of God. Amen. Devil wants you to just be down all the time. Heard somebody the devil listening to. He said, happiness is a moral responsibility. <clears throat> I'll say it again. Happiness is a moral responsibility. Think about that. Why? Why should it be a moral responsibility? Because we affect other people. Moral responsibility does the right thing because it influences other people. If you have a good set of morals, then you'll do the right thing. Amen? So sometimes we need to get our morals twisted correctly because they're really twisted wrong. So happiness is a moral responsibility. I'm blessed, man. I have a choice to walk in that blessing, or I have a choice to not walk in. It's my choice. Joy is activated in us when we look for the good in everything around us. And exercising uh, this joy can bring what you need in your life. Some things you can do, you know. Some things may be coming to your mind right now when I say, what, what brings you joy? Some of y'all may say, you know, hey, walk into the woods. Do y'all have roses up here? Does anybody have roses? Do they grow up here, rose bushes? Yeah. My brother not that's a lot of roses. Yeah. Rose bushes, yeah. They survived in energy. You got a couple of them. You got some too. Okay. We're going to come out to your house. We're going to come check the roses out. I love roses. Hallelujah. You know, maybe just trimming a rose bush. What is it? Gardening. Gardening. Yeah. You know, we get man, we get so busy just going and doing, don't we? And I mean, I fall into that category too. We got to make a choice. I came here last night. They were practicing for worship and uh, I said, it's my piano. I'm like, hey, I played my piano in a long time. So I drug it in here and Anna walked and go, oh, you said piano. I said, me I'm like, to play. And I got to play music. And I told John, John was playing the bass, Ashley was on the guitar. And I said, you know, we need to do that more often. Just make a point to do it. Because if you don't make a point to do it, then will you ever do it? No, you just not unless you happen stands walk in. And that happens from time to time. That ain't what you get. Come on. So what brings you joy? Reading this ought to bring you some joy right here. That ought to be the primary supply right there, okay? Maybe walking down the block. I had somebody years ago. Very lax day, they wouldn't do anything. And I said, man, why don't you just get out and walk? Well, I can't go that far. I said, go from here to that wall. Or go from here to that tree and turn around and come back. I said, do that every day. That's just too much. That ain't too far. Come on, Tim. <laughs> and I said, have you done that for a week? I said, see that other tree down there a little bit further? Walk down there and come back. Have you done that for a week? Go to the end of the block. Get some fresh air. Get out of the house. Just do something. Hallelujah. Amen. Do something that's good. Hallelujah. Just the act of smiling can trick our bodies into releasing dopamine. Did you know that? I'm up here laughing. I need some dopamine. Yes. <laughs> just the act of smiling can trick our bodies into releasing dopamine and serotonin into our bodies. So just putting on a smile is very life-changing at the core of our being. It also affects others we encounter. There was a lady at the grocery store down the road. Walk in, we got new greeter at the door, and I'm like, <laughs> grab my basket, and I'm just happy to go left, go and get my stuff. All the way out, got my receipt, you know. But... <laughs> like, you doing all right to see him? <laughs> <laughs> I just kept kind of pressing in, and, and before I left, it was kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fact 
defeated her. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Maybe rubbed off a little bit and rubbed off on the next person, you know? Come on. It's amazing how we affect other people, folks. If you had the choice to be around someone positive or negative, which one would you choose? Positive. positive. Come on. I like being around people that are encouraging and positive. I used to not like to hang around with myself because I wasn't positive and I wasn't encouraging. I was a funny dad. I'd see myself in the mirror and I'm like, oh, you again? Are you serious? Get out of here, man. Maybe not that extreme. <laughs> man, I like being joyful. I like being happy. I like spreading out the glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Sandy said, smile. Makes them wonder what you're up to. I always tell the kids that. What are you doing? Let me smile about it. Hey, let me tell you about Jesus. <laughs> Why are you so happy about Jesus? Come on. Fear focuses on problems. It gives you anxiety. Fear gives you irritability. It makes you irritable. You know? Anybody ever been irritable? <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like it myself either. <laughs> it's like, mm. you know, it's like everybody's running the other way. You know, it's like, where are you running from? Let me, let me give you some of this irritability. You know, and I'm irritated. You know, it's like, no, get out of the way. Seriously. Hmm. But it avoids, it avoids responsibility either. Fear will avoid responsibility. Fear makes you complain. If you find yourself complaining, you ought to check where your thoughts are at. What's going on there? It shifts blame even. It makes you exhausted. You know, I, I, in the past, I've never been you know, irritable and upset and all those things. And at the end of the day, like, oh, that's a good day, man. <laughs> that's a good irritability, you know. <laughs> When I go to bed, it's like, uh, do I want to go to sleep with this? Do I want to let the sun go down on my rent? <laughs> no. Release. Let it go. How do you release? How do you let it go? Huh? So there's what I'm looking for. Yeah. You speak it. You speak the right thing. You speak the word. You speak that he has already carried the burden for you. Therefore, you don't have to carry it anymore. And you stand and you make a statement. And you say, I am not backing up from this. As for me, I'm making a choice. And you know what? And if this toxicity doesn't stop right here, I'm just going to have to walk away from it for a while. That's okay. I had a friend years ago, I worked with at Home Depot back in Texas in the plumbing department. His name was Doug. Love Doug. Always had a great attitude. When I had a bad attitude, Doug would come along and just like, hey man, how's it going? You know? I'm like, you know, it's Doug in the end. Oh, Doug. <laughs> you know, and he said, just happy go lucky, man. Doug ever him telling me a story. And he said, uh, yeah, I used to work with plumbers. We'd go out and we'd clean septic systems and stuff like that. And he said, they didn't have cameras back then where you could put them down there and look. He said, you know what they would do? I said, well, said, since I was so skinny, he said, they one of them grab me by this angle, the other by the other angle, and they'd lower me down in there with a flashlight. I'd look in there upside down, and I'd figure, oh, there it is. There's the problem. <laughs> I said, man, you had some trust. He said, oh, I trusted them. Yeah. He said, they ever drop you? He said, oh, no, they never did. <laughs> but think about that. Toxicity would be dunking you in that and just staying there or climbing, get cleaned up, and move on. Would you just hang out? Anybody ever work with septic systems? Sure. Um, some of you guys, but maybe some ladies too. Man, I don't like working with that stuff. Yeah. Man, gloves, I'm, I'm hazmat on, <laughs> if I can get it, you know, or goggles. No, not, not that extreme, but. Like, man, let's get this done and get away from here, you know? 
It's, it's like the, the bad thing. You go, you, do you go in there and do your business and just kind of hang out? <laughs> There's a little lever. <laughs> I've seen it on the door, and I use it all the time. Hallelujah. Oh, this pastor getting a little, a little, a little explicit here. <laughs> it, it's a little thing called the, the flusher. You just hit that little thing, and it goes away. He does flush all the things that are stealing your joy. You don't go run out there in the second line out here is six feet under the ground, so it'll take you a long to go. You don't go out there and try to dig and say, oh, I gotta look at it again. No, once it's gone, it's gone. You need to face the reality that the things that are stealing your joy, they are toxic. They're toxic to you. And they're toxic to other people around you, and they're affecting your relationships. Put a smile on. I love your smile. Look at your neighbor just smile. Come on, smile, smile. <laughs> so fear, that's what fear focuses on. That's what fear does. But joy, this is what joy focuses on. It focuses on solutions. So what would be the solution for what I'm facing right now? I may need to move over here for a little bit. I may need to, may need to do this. I need to speak this. When I have people come to me that are just we're down in the gutter, what do I start doing? I start speaking truth. Truth, 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 truth. I pray, I bind, I rebuke, and all that stuff too. But I start speaking truth. But like you said, you worry about it. It probably ain't even going to happen. Hallelujah. And we fret over things and we worry over things. And after a week or two or a month, it's like, oh, it didn't even happen. A lot of spent energy over a bunch of nothing. But joy focuses on solutions. It gives you appreciation, thanksgiving. It helps you problem solve. Why? Because you're getting on the right side of your brain and you can start thinking. Fear is not rational. Fear has never, ever been rational. You can't argue somebody out of their fear. You, you can't. All thing you do is come along and, and speak truth and say, you know what? It says right here. Such and such. That's what it says. And if you're not going to make the choice, and you're going to stay in this funny dead spirit, I'm going to move on. I love you. I'm not rejecting you. I love you. And when you're ready to face it, I'll be here for you. Joy owns the responsibility. Sometimes there's things we got to own, right? It owns responsibility. It gives you more energy, and it also helps you share Share the power. Share everything. Because when I have joy, it's got to get out. <laughs> Seriously. It's like the joy will go. Just let that joy go. Because if you let it go, other people no. think of that song, let it go. Let it go. <laughs> My word. Seriously. Joy is in you because you have the Holy Ghost. Come on. How many got the Holy Ghost? That's the Holy Spirit. I'm an old timer talking there, and I'm not really that old. The Holy Ghost. Yeah. The Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sympathetic nervous system. You ever heard of that? The sympathetic nervous system? Okay. The sympathetic nervous system is where most people stay. When they have had traumas in the past and never worked through them correctly. The sympathetic nervous system is not designed for us to camp there, folks. But so many times we camp there because we've had a trauma. And in that trauma, we believe a lie and now we're chewing on that lie. My ears, oh my word. Maybe I could get a, we call them toboggans. Now y'all probably, what's a toboggan? It's a sled. It's a sled. sled and it's, it's a cat. Good, I'm glad to see somebody's. Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. So, yeah, toboggans are the sleds. But when I was a kid, that's what we called the little beanies you put on your head. 
So I learned when I came to Texas, I like I get into toboggan. People are looking at me like in Texas. Yeah, you know, so like, what do you need a toboggan for? It's a little cold today. You know? We don't have toboggans here, you know. And had a friend that cut up a boat and we put it behind the store of our Subaru and he pulled us around the neighborhood. But one time it snowed when we went to Texas back in the 80s. That was fun until the policeman pulled him over and told me I had to stop doing that. <laughs> But our sympathetic nervous system is where most people stay when they've had traumas in the past and they've never worked through them correctly. The parasympathetic nervous system is where we should be camping, folks. The parasympathetic, uh, sympathetic. the sympathetic, and then the, the parasympathetic nervous system. And the, the parasympathetic is where we should be camping out because this is where our bodies can maintain us correctly. So people that are in the sympathetic nervous system on the I don't know which side of the brain it's on. When you're camping out there, that's where all everything's just like you know, and one little thing can set you off. Somebody can say something. Somebody can kind of give you that look, you know. And somebody gave you that look when you were a kid. And there was something that happened after the fact. And now everybody that looks at you kind of do it. Look, it takes you back to that because you've never gone back to and dealt with what happened out there. Does that make sense? Okay. Let me move on. We're going to be on this subject for a while. I won't get this all done today, but we'll get back into it next Sunday. But let me let me read you a little bit more. In the sympathetic nerves, we have the responses of. This is what happens physically. Your pupils dilate, inhibition of uh, salivation, increased heartbeat, relaxed airways, inhibiting stomach activity, inhibition of gallbladder, inhibitive activity of intestines, secretion of epinephrine and norepinephrine in your relaxed bladder. Man, that's, that's, that's not some good stuff. That's not good. My point is, is that when we're in that side of our brain and we're just basically giving into and we're listening to those things that are lies, that's where we camp out. And then there's a physical response in our body. It's following suit because that's where we're hanging out. Okay. So in the parasympathetic nervous system, we have these responses. This is the good place. Pupils constrict and stimulate saliva, slow heartbeat, not so slow that you're. You know, but it's not, you know, 140 beats per, you know, whatever, and per minute, or whatever. Uh, contract airways, uh, stimulate activity of the stomach, stimulate the gallbladder, they stimulate activity of the intestines, and uh, contract the bladder. Most folks that were raised in a home with high levels of stress and traumatic experiences have a tendency to stay in the sympathetic nervous system uh, response most of their lives. That's where they camp out. That's why disease is so prominent with so many people, is because your body's not designed to camp there. So those people have a tendency to stay there. And only having the parasympathetic nervous system kick in when their bodies force them to slow down. Sometimes it happens when people get sick and they can't do that. Next thing you know, what are they doing? Sitting around. Sometimes our bodies force us to do that. And I'm not saying it's always when we get sick, but sometimes the brain, I was learning the other day, there's a deal in our memories that when things are going on, it's a bridge to connect. And when we stay in those traumas for so long and listen to the lies, what we, what literally happens with all the at least cortisol that gets continually released, it literally burns that bridge and you lose memory of things. That's why some people have gaps in their life with memories and they're like, I don't remember the age between eight and sixteen or whatever. Because there's areas in their life that it was constant fear and it burned those areas. And I'll tell you right now, I've got areas in my life I don't remember. Because I, I grew up in a not so good environment. 
And even in my teenage years, I've got areas I don't remember. I was talking with a pastor one time, and I was like, what do you, what do you make of that? And they said, I think it's a protection mode that the Lord puts in to protect us. And it may come back one day. And if it does, the memories of that, once you start getting healing, then deal with it. Speak truth. I've had many times I've gone back to things in my childhood that I didn't remember. And all of a sudden, bang, there it was. I'm like, whoa. Dealt with it spiritually. Spoke truth. And I moved on. And it healed those areas inside of me and took care of a lot of junk. Does this make any sense to you guys? So let me let me wrap this up. Most folks that were raised in a home with high levels of stress and traumatic experiences. Sorry, there. I love family. Yeah, I love family. Family's wonderful. We've got a little grandkid coming. Uh, is it the next one? Our first. Hallelujah. It's uh, Melody Jean. Hallelujah. It's going to be a Melody. First. Melody and the Lord. First. Most folks that were raised in a home with high levels of stress and traumatic experiences have a tendency to stay in the sympathetic nurse response most of their lives. And only having the parasympathetic nerve system kick in when the body's forced them to slow down. But then after a period of time, what happens is they go right back into it. Would you guys come up and give us some better culture for you? <laughs> <laughs> You're talking. <laughs> the signs of the, huh? I love you guys, man. You guys are awesome. Our worship team is awesome. Praise the Lord. How we face life and respond is from what we believe, folks. How we face life and respond is from what we believe. And if we were trained in a lie very young, or even as we got older, then we respond from that with everyday things we've been through. And then we go through. Thanks. We stand with you. Solid skill. <laughs> so, one thing I want you to take from here today is that everything that you face, you have a choice. You have a choice to face it from what God's Word said. And Mitch started us off with that one. Praise God. Thank you. Be a doer. And I know, I know that sometimes we're not doing it to the word because things get in and it messes with us, and we see things physically with our eyes, and it's like, oh Lord, I need help. I want you to know that God's not up there saying, "Man, he missed it again." Oh my goodness, when is he going to get this? When's he going to figure it out? Sometimes we think those things, don't we? Oh, Lord, I failed you again. I want you to know that God loves you, He cares for you. And even when you miss it and you fail, that doesn't mean that He stops being your Father. Glory to God. And there's no hoops that you got to jump through that He'll say, okay, I'm, I'm not. He doesn't do this. He doesn't say, well, you know, John missed it again. And, I think I'm just not going to be his father for two weeks. I'm not going to answer his text. I'm not going to, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and block him on my, my phone or my Android. Man. You know what? That thing he sent me the other day, why don't you take it out there and just put it in the trash? <laughs> Send me a card, you know, for my birthday. Man, God's not even old because he never had a beginning. He's just there. Glory to God. Think about that. God loves you. All he wants you to do is just trust that he loves you. Amen? And rest in him. When I went to Holy Missouri, Lord put on my heart to tell the people to just trust 
expect and rest. That was the theme of the whole conference while we were there. Trust, rest, and expect. So this morning, would you trust him? Yes. We've already prayed for a release. And I would like to invite you to just come up here to the front. If you've got anything else that's come on your heart, just come up here. Make this your stone. Make this your, your altar and say, Lord, I'm giving this to you. And if you really didn't give it to him earlier, come up here and give that to him also. Quit going back to the cross and grab it. Line it up right here. Praise the Lord. Come on up and move out because that is your faith mixed with your actions, praise the Lord, is when you step out and you move up here, praise the Lord. Glory to God. You need to release it to the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to sing a line or two of this. You guys just get before the Lord. Come on up. Just 